This is my 2006 Honda Odyssey that I'm attempting to keep alive. She just passed 200,000 miles. And as I'm sitting still in drive throughs with the kids, I'm noticing my temperature gauge creeping up. Now this never happens when I drive. And this is way past normal. The fans kick on and run hard. It's 44 degrees out and this should absolutely stay at normal operating temperature at this uh, at this weather. So this van has always run in the summer, air conditioning blasting 100 degrees out and the gauge never moves. So uh, we've got a flow issue. I did check the fluid. The fluid is completely full. So let's look into this. Another part of this symptom is if I rev the engine, watch this the temperature is going to go down. Here we go, revving. Look at that. As I rev, the temperature immediately goes down, indicating there's definitely a flow issue happening in here. There's a bottleneck in the system. Potential things could be a plugged radiator or something, but my go-to is always to replace the thermostat. So I went to O'Reilly and bought a new thermostat and gasket. We're going to put the thermostat in because there's no leaks in this system. The fluid is full, so there should be no air bubbles in it. And I believe a thermostat is probably going to fix this up. Let's check it out best way to start is with a cool engine. This one is boiling hot from commuter traffic, but it is time to do the thermostat right now because I need this car running. First thing we're going to do is drain the hot coolant. If you look straight down here, there is a hole in the rear plastic valance on the front of the car. Your hand will fit through that hole. So we're going to drain the radiator down so the fluid doesn't gush out over here when we undo the thermostat housing. Now, we can open this cap and make it drain much faster. Next, we'll disconnect the battery using a 10 millimeter socket, starting with the negative. Then you can use a 10 millimeter deep socket, disconnect the battery hold down, and pull the battery out. This is the thermostat housing. There are two 10 millimeter bolts holding it in place. There's one on this side and then one on the very opposite side. All right, so if your Odyssey has this plastic housing here for wires and it has this little extension down here, you can't just put a socket on it. You see what I mean? That blocks your access with a socket to the other bolt. So the top one here, the top bolt's easy. This back one's different. I think what I want to do is remove this metal loom that's holding this wiring in place. It's got two 12 millimeters on it. There's one right there. There's one right back there. So I'm going to remove this transmission dipstick and cover that hole with a rag so I don't dump any junk in there. I'm using the 3 8 ratchet with a 12 millimeter on the end. I just broke them loose off camera because I needed both hands. Kind of rusty. This fits right under the airbox, so I don't feel like I need to take this off right now. All right, so those two 12 millimeters are out. That gives me wiggle room here. I can. Lift this whole unit up. This little leg down here was what was preventing me from getting a socket in. So now I should be able to lift it, get a socket with an extension behind there, and unbolt the thermostat housing. 3 8 inch drive with a 10 millimeter long gets me right on the bolt. Let's push it on there, make sure it's square. 
so I don't strip anything. I'm going to remove the upper radiator hose. Come on. There we go. This is probably going to dump some fluids, so keep your dogs and cats away. Sweet. Now I can easily get to the upper bolt. Let's have a closer look here. Thermostat's pulled off, and there's the original thermostat here. Now note, note what's sticking out, which direction it goes, okay? You can take your pliers, grab a hold of it, and give it a twist. That's going to dump water. Pretty good amount of it. This is the direction the thermostat sat. This points out towards the hose that comes to the radiator. All right, this is very important. If you flip it around, this is not going to work at all, and you're going to toast an engine. All right, here is the old Honda thermostat and the new thermostat. There's a lot of difference in these, the way they're constructed. Um, this one that I'm putting in looks fairly cheap. I did call Honda and this was $104. And this at O'Reilly was like $12. So you can see that there are corners cut here. So proceed with caution. You'll notice on this Honda one, it has the little burper valve here. This lets air through and kind of helps self burp your system. And it does have an indication of up. See that up with an arrow. The new one does not have an indication of up. However, it does have a little burper valve right here. So you'll want to put that up just like the old Honda one. This is going to point outward from the engine like so. Make sure you have this seal. You're not going to use any liquid gasket maker for this project. You're going to let this make a good seal. This is also a good time to hit any surfaces here that have corrosion. Hit that with some uh, wire brush. It's probably the best choice. Mine's really clean, so I'm going to leave it alone. If it's smooth, it's going to seal. All right, in we go. You're going to have to kind of finagle it a little bit with the thermostat still connected to stuff. You'll see it in its place. Like so. Now we're going to bolt it back up. I'll put the camera on the tripod for you. The back bolt's kind of in a rough place to get with your fingers. We can overcome. I'm going to get some electrical tape over the end of my 10 millimeter socket, set it there. I'm going to jam. <laughs> I'm going to jam my bolt in there. Like so. That gives me something to put it in with. So I'm going to thread it in by hand like this on the back bolt. Now I'll reinstall the upper radiator hose. Probably plug my sensors back in. I'm going to put the two 12 millimeter bolts back in to the wiring loom bracket there that I took off. You'll note there are two different sizes that came out. The long one goes in the back one, the short one, front side. Now I'm going to reconnect the electrical connections here. These all go to one place, so it's pretty impossible to screw up. So there are two things that will keep you from screwing up. Wire length, they go exactly to where they're supposed to go. And the sockets are different. If you mess it up, you're a talented person.
quick note on how your battery hold down works. These hooks here go into those spots like that. There's one on the front as well. That holds it in. You're going to want to close your drain clockwise inward. That's going to stop the flow. Now I can't recommend this funnel kit enough. This is called a OEM Tools No Spill Cooling System Funnel and this allows you to fill your system no spills and you can fill this up high. This will become the highest point in the system and it will allow your system to burp all bubbles out. You don't want any air bubbles in the system. Your heater won't work. Your engine might overheat. Bad things. It has custom nozzles on it that allow you to snug in a fitting. You can reuse your coolant somewhat. And you'll probably need more because I dumped easily half gallon on the ground when I opened that thermostat up. All right, this is 50-50 universal mix antifreeze. There are Asian mix antifreezes that you could use if it's a nice car, but this thing has 200,000 miles and is, it's gonna die. So you will need a lot of fluid, because remember when we opened the thermostat up, we lost a lot. So there are empty spaces in there with air bubbles. The goal of burping this system is to get all the air bubbles out so it works correctly. I'm gonna fill up my burp funnel here. If you don't have a burp funnel, that's fine. Just fill up your radiator all the way. Now I'm going to go fire up the van. Firing up is going to get the water pump turning, and it's going to start circulating this fluid and heating it. And then we're going to have our thermostat open up for the first time, make sure it works. Throughout the burp, you want to watch your temperature gauge and make sure it doesn't spike. And you want to turn your heater on hot. Here we go. You can see all the bubbles, it's taking it in. I'm gonna fill this back up. This is creating a high pressure. This is creating a high point in the system. Kind of like a water tower. All the air is gonna come up here. Burping is complete. We have no more bubbles popping up. I'm going to close this funnel off so I don't dump everywhere. I'm going to open my overflow and make sure the overflow is topped off. Cap the radiator, open the overflow. See that line there? Fill it up to the max. And I think we're gonna call it a day. I'm gonna watch for leaks on the ground. For how long? For weeks. And I'm also gonna watch my temperature gauge, make sure that thermostat is opening and closing. All right, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to the Riggs Garage channel. Thanks for watching.